Spirit is saying the Bible says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. Doesn't mean you don't have other songs. A new song does not necessarily mean a song just composed. Are we together now? So this this song tonight is not about dancing, it's about meditation and let your spirit is a very powerful song. Let me tell you, you I'm very, very proud of you. You received this song from the spirit. By the grace of God, the Lord will lift you and you will go from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Let's, let's not make this thing look like we are playing games here. If you receive from heaven, we will know by what it does in the earth. If your song came from heaven, it's impossible to not have an impact. If your preaching came from heaven, it is impossible to not have an impact. This canal thing people do all around you sit down, borrow someone's song, borrow another one, conjure something, and just, just because. But because of what he's doing, thank you will mean something to you. So I want you to listen to this song because the part of it that blesses me may not be the part that blesses you. Our dealings are different. So let your ears, the Bible says, he that hath an ear. This ear is the spirit of God that gives men. I will give so okay, strings, go ahead. Shout me blessings from above
back to the crime. Oh, 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 but you love me anyway. Oh, my lover, you love me anyway. It makes me wonder what did I do to deserve your love? What did I do to deserve your love? Cause nothing. Yeah. 
나난 가시난 가문한 설기어잖아 야 나난 가시난 가문한 야 나난 야 나난 He is here We are here The King of Heaven He is here He is here We are here Say Kainanan 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 Kashinan Kamunan Sarke Ruler, 
precious Father, great and mighty, you alone the world
praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I am really delighted, very, very happy to be coming to us by way of the cloud. I bless God for this privilege that he's given. Um, I'm very, very happy and I want to appreciate everyone who is following on the social media platforms from your homes, your phones, your computers. Thank you so much in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'd like to begin by really expressing my gratitude. Thank you so, so much for your love for me. I am overwhelmed. I have already received thousands, thousands, literally, of text messages from all over the world. Thank you. It's an honor to serve His Majesty. Um, I'm also happy and blessed to um, be able to bless our hearts on this day. It's a special day for me. And um, I believe that the truths that we'll be hearing would be most edifying. I really, really appreciate every one of us. I'd like us to pray and then we'll just get to the word. Father, thank you. Thank you for our global family all over the world, from America to the United Kingdom to South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, China, Germany. Thank you, O oh God, for the many who are connecting, the many who will hear these truths. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless your people. Let today mark a turnaround in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for your love for me. I am overwhelmed. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not somebody who really, really loves to, uh, you know, just be around the spotlight. I'm quite a conservative person, so you can imagine what this means for me. But I truly, truly want to express my gratitude. I'm told that there have been so many things happening on the internet just to show honor. And I truly appreciate it. It's an honor to serve this generation. It's an honor to be a blessing to all of you. My precious family in Zaria and then our global family, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you uh, with all my heart. Now, I began to think very carefully on the things that I'll be sharing and um, it's been my conviction, it's been my persuasion to ensure that people um, get blessed and have an accurate understanding of the ways of the Spirit. And I thought that sharing something along that line would be a blessing to us. Um, so I really want us to pay attention. I want you to lend your destiny this few minutes to receive the Word of God that will come to bless, that will come to lift in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, by the privilege of His grace, um, you are celebrating me and celebrating what God has done and continues to do in and through my life. But there are principles that have been followed through the years and have been kept that are responsible for the results that we now celebrate. Ultimately, it is the grace of God, but then it's an intertwining of systems and principles and I really would want to share some of them. This would be my birthday gift to our global family and all who are connected to this grace. Uh, I'd like to share what I title the principles of transgenerational impact. I'm concerned about the sustainability of our impact, not just the impact. Bless God for the privilege and the opportunity. Um, but then I really, really would want to... Uh, pour this out as a birthday teaching to just bless our hearts and I pray the Lord will bless us in Jesus name. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. The Bible says that and David served his own generation. He served the purposes of God some versions will say in his own generation. Not only did he serve his generation the Bible says he served the purposes of God but also in his generation. And it is, it is important to not only serve God, but to serve God in a way and a manner that is relevant to the context of a generation. And there are principles that I have kept in my life 
and uh, there are principles that have come from the Word of God. This is my Bible right here. I believe the Word of God with all my heart. This is all that has made me what I am. I have profound reverence and respect for the Word of God. And um, I, I, I want to share with you these principles and they would bless your heart. <clears throat> First, it's important for us to know that God is a God of patterns. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 40, when Moses began to build a tabernacle in the wilderness, again he was told that he builds according to pattern. In this kingdom, we are not given the luxury and the privilege of inventing our pathway to success or inventing our pathway to the knowledge of God. This path has been predefined. Our assignment, like Prophet Jeremiah would say, is to ask for the ancient path. And then when we find it, that we walk therein and find rest for our soul. So God is a God of pattern. When you read in Exodus chapter 40, Exodus chapter 40 uh, from verse 16 and then from verse 33 down to 35, the Bible clearly states that God continued to come to tell Moses, ensure that the tabernacle is built according to pattern. And then the Bible says something interesting. The B part, the Bible says from verse 33, and so Moses finished the work according to pattern. Then the Bible now says, and the glory of God came. The glory of God came and covered the entire tabernacle such that the priests could not even enter. I have said it again and again that the glory of God will always come as a confirmation that his patterns have been honored. Every time divine patterns are honored, the glory of God is the effect. His glory comes to honor the fact that his patterns have been kept. So if the glory of God comes upon a ministry, the glory of God comes upon an individual, the glory of God comes upon um, a family, the glory of God comes upon our finances, our lives, a nation. It is only proof that the patterns of the kingdom have been kept. It is very important for us to understand this. Many people desire the glory of God. We desire the glory of God in our lives, in our businesses, in ministries, our career, and so on and so forth. But the challenge is not the unwillingness of God, as it were, to reveal his glory in our lives. The challenge most times is that we are not walking in keeping with his prescribed patterns. Amen. And so I'll take a few points that I've written down here to be a blessing to us. Number one, the first key that must be um, observed and kept for any life and any destiny that seeks to be able to make impact in this generation especially, and it's been consistent with every generation, is that you must know God. This is very important. The knowledge of the Holy One is critical and very important. I'm sure that several people will be watching from different nations of the world, belonging to different faiths and, and beliefs and all of that. And, and I have profound respect for whatever it is that you believe. But as a child of God, one whose convictions are referenced from Scripture, I can tell you that the Bible can turn any man into a wonder because it helps you to know the God of heaven. Very, very important. John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying now. And then he says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, and then the Son. The knowledge of the Father and the Son is eternal life. The one true God. It is very, very important. Most people fail in life primarily because we do not have convictions. It is terrible to live in this generation without convictions. To dilly dal between thoughts, dilly dal between opinions, dilly dal between perspectives, and so on and so forth. It is very important that we know God. Daniel 11 and 32, the B part says, but the people that do know their God, the Bible says, number one, they shall be strong, and then number two, they shall do exploits. 
our exploits in life and our strength, our capacity is predicated upon our knowledge of God. And, and the knowledge of God does not just mean the mere awareness that there is a deity. No, no, not at all. It means a personal knowledge of God that leads to strength and conviction. Very, very important. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, the prophet was teaching, and when you read from verse 23 and 24, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, he says. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But then he says, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The pride of the believer is not in the acquisition of physical things and material things as important as they can be. Our pride and our confidence in this kingdom is predicated upon the experiential knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is very important. You will never be able to influence a generation when you do not know God. The advantage of the knowledge of God is that it brings what we call spiritual growth. You know, we talk a lot about spiritual growth and most people think spiritual growth means participation in a denomination's activity. That may help spiritual growth, but ultimately, spiritual growth is measured by two indices. Number one, um, your degree of conformity to the character and the image of the Christ. This is the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth. And then number two, your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. A man is said to be growing spiritually to the degree to which you, number one, conform experientially to the character of the Christ. And then number two, your depth of comprehension Ephesians 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. It is important that we contend through the knowledge of God to strive, taking advantage of the grace supplied us to grow spiritually. Amen. And then also, um, I would want to say this. When you really, really want to know God, you must contend for the grace that helps you to embrace the whole counsel of God. Now, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. What I'm saying is very, very important. Um, I think the reason why many people do not maximize their spiritual experience is because, um, and, and, and we preachers must take a very serious responsibility for this, I have taught again and again that a believer does not mature when we are, we are limited by just a dimension of God. God is multidimensional and the nature of his operation is that he reveals himself dimensionally to people. I have been given a dimension of the grace of God to communicate to my generation and I'm honored to be able to carry that, that fire, that grace. But all that God has given me is not all that he has and it's not all that is needed for a generation. Now, if I limit this generation to only my understanding of God and the perspective communicated to me, then other dimensions of God that are equally required to strengthen the body will not be there. This has been the challenge with ministries again and again. As well-meaning as we may be, we may not have mentored people properly into embracing the whole counsel of God. Sadly, the pandemic has come now and it has revealed several dimensions that we may not have paid attention to. For instance, the place for personal encounter and press for the things of God. There are people, respectfully speaking, who will have to depend on a pastor's teaching or a corporate fast, a corporate program from a church or a meeting to be able to grow spiritually because they have not been mentored into understanding that we must take personal responsibility for our spiritual growth. For, for such people, you can imagine how tragic it will be for them now that um, the, for, for most parts of the world and even this country, um, the, the, there's still a ban on having, you know, religious activities localized 
and all of that. So many may not be able to grow until they are taught that they can have a personal relationship with God, that pastors and teachers, apostles and prophets are mere support systems, not the basis for knowing God. You see, this is very important. Another dimension, for instance, is the dimension of finances and the well-being of people. It's been an imbalance for many, many years in the body of Christ on both ways, neglecting it or exaggerating it. It's, it's caused a lot of problems. And you can see that there are families that have been stranded, people, companies have downsized people, and, and you know, their husbands and wives altogether who have lost jobs. And most people have not been taught accurately the economic system of the kingdom, the system allocated for the welfare of the saints. The side effect is that so many people now are languishing in want and poverty and this in itself can become a distraction to our spiritual life. So I'm just saying that it is important that as we seek to inspire and bless our generation to be able to teach and also embrace the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is not found with any single man as a ministry, but it can be outsourced as a product of meekness, a product of pursuit, and a product of diligent search. I have made up my mind as a man of God and one who has been a privileged steward of this mystery that I will, like a spiritual archaeologist, search for all of the dimensions that reveal the whole counsel of God and learn it for myself and my welfare and then do my best to communicate the same to the generation I've been sent to. And this is my first proposition that in our attempt to know God as the first key to influencing our generation, we must be open-hearted more than the doctrine of a denomination, more than the thought of a well-meaning mentor or father. This is not a proposition for rebellion at all. Please don't misunderstand me. This is only an attempt for us to enlarge our appetite for spiritual things so that we can incorporate within our spiritual space all the dimensions of God required for life and godliness. Amen. The second, very quickly, the second key that I've written here is that for you to be able to impact a generation, you must have a clear vision for your life. This is very important. It's unfortunate that we live in a generation that um, may not be as visionary as we should be. There is, is such distraction in our generation, especially among uh, the young people, there is, there is a clamor for our space, there is a clamor for our attention. The social media, as important as it is, it's been beneficial and we're taking advantage of it now to be a blessing, but there is a, there is a very demonic and subtle distraction that this generation is falling prey to. And it is important that we find a way of getting back in order. Vision is very important. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, it says, Lo, I come, as it is written of me in the volume of the book, to do thy will. Vision gives you focus. Vision gives you direction. Vision prunes your relationships. Vision prunes your activities. You get busy but not doing many things. Your energy is coordinated. Your energy is directed towards specific kingdom assignments. It is important to find a vision for your life. Your assignment is simply your contribution to kingdom come. Your contribution to the revelation of the Christ and the exaltation of the same. The role that you have been divinely given as far as the revelation of the glory of God is concerned. And I want to challenge everyone listening. It is important to sit back. Your ambition is not your assignment necessarily. It can be incorporated in your assignment, but it's important for us to find a vision for our lives. A lot of people live meaningless lives and we allow culture and status quo to define the next thing in our lives. Go to school, the next thing marriage, the next thing a job, the next thing children, the next thing, you know, a sense of significance and then people pass on to glory. It's not a very fulfilling life. It is important for us to be able to sit down and on this uh, day, uh, my birthday, I'm using the opportunity to challenge a generation to sit down 
I had the privilege to be greatly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro and one of his books, the first of his books that I read many years ago was Discovering Your Purpose. That book radically transformed my life. It just set the coordinates of my focus. And today I live a very busy life, um, but then I am happy that my being busy is not shadow boxing. It is an intentional um, press towards accomplishing specific divine goals and visions. It is important. We must have clear visions for our lives. And those visions must be broken into goals. Not erratic goals that we just have today and then have tomorrow. There are many people who just fabricate goals here and there. There must be sustainability to our pursuit. You can't just choose to do this today, choose to do that tomorrow. Uh, you will not be able to influence a generation like this. One thing I can tell you about this generation is that they respect focus. This generation respects sustainability. Uh, you will never be able to accord honor from this generation when you vacillate in your convictions and your focus. Uh, with all humility, today you are celebrating my life and what God has done primarily because there has been consistency and focus. Anyone who knows me, whether it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I've been at the same thing, pursuing to see that the, the life of God, the reality of God is replicated across the earth. This is why I live. This is why I breathe. This is why I sleep. Everything I do is in honor of that vision. And so we must challenge ourselves to find meaning for our lives. When you find your vision, it will direct you, direct marriage, direct your job, direct your location where you settle, direct everything about your life. This is very, very important. We must also, still speaking about vision, um, let me say this. Many people, truly speaking, many people, I would say, are visionary. We've been able to find something to do with our lives but i think the challenge for many people is that we just stop at the realm of visions and we never come up with strategies for actualizing that vision it is not enough to have a vision i want to have a great ministry i want to build a great business i want to be a good um, family man i want to be a good career person uh, you know, and so on and so forth. Most people have passed that realm of just documenting something that they think they want to state their lives for. But I am challenging everyone listening to me and everyone watching, master the science of achievement. It is very important. The strategy that turns dreams and visions to reality. It is important. It is wonderful to have a vision but it is noble when the vision speaks. Today, by the grace of God, what we celebrate that we call koinonia, what we celebrate, the ministry that the Lord has committed to my hand, was once a vision in the heart of a young man. But by the grace of God, through the networking of systems and spiritual strategies, today has become a blessing to everyone around the globe. And so I am challenging us. There are businesses, there are dreams that we have, there are ministries that are locked up from within our spirit. And many people continue to write these visions. They go for retreats. I want to build a house. I want to do this and that. But many of us have not mastered the science, the technology for achievement. That is a whole subject I'm trusting by the grace of God that the Lord will grant grace as the weeks and the months progress and when we have the opportunity to make contact with ourselves again so that the ministry of transformation continues, I, I trust that I'll be sharing specific strategies that we will be able to use to achieve dreams. You'll never move forward. You'll never truly be motivated when all you have is vision. As important as that is, you must be able to know how to turn dreams into reality. Praise the Lord. The next point that I have here is that to influence a generation, you must contend for mental transformation. Look, I cannot stress this enough. Listen to me. Please listen to me. Everyone listen very carefully. It is, it is important. 
the place of mental transformation, sustaining superior belief systems, belief systems that are beyond our cultural context, superior belief systems that are, are superior to our our backgrounds, our failures of the past, and so on and so forth. Now, I've done a number of teachings. You can access them, uh, several teachings that, that relate to this. But let me say this very, very important. Proverbs, um, I mean, um, Ephesians chapter 3, I would say, verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. Ask or think ask or think that means god will do what we ask and he will also do what we think your thinking is also a prayer warrior it raises requests to heaven and we have many people that pray africa is a praying continent nigeria is a praying generation don't get me wrong i am i am a man of prayer you know that but i am telling you you will never be able to rise to influence a generation globally territorially until you sustain a superior belief system most of the time we spend trying to live fake lives going on social media to do a lot of things you know just trying to act out narratives that are untrue those times can be invested into building belief systems that are superior a superior belief system is a belief system that is referenced um, first from scripture and then reference from a system of mentorship from men who have proven track records. A superior belief system is not an invention of an individual. These are pathways, mental pathways that have been proven to work. Every dimension of result that we seek has a corresponding belief system that attracts it. Success is not what you pursue. If you find yourself pursuing success of any kind, spiritual, financial, is, is, is already proof that you will never get it. Success is attracted by your growth. Success is attracted by the requisite belief system that controls it. Every dimension of grace, even the anointing, where a generation that is so passionate about the anointing, the anointing does not just come because you are hungry. There is a requisite belief system. The oil did not come provided the vessel was small. As the vessel was expanded, the oil continued to expand to assume the size of the vessel. This is very important. A few scriptures. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Sustain this paradigm, this belief system that was in Christ Jesus. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, the Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind as he thinketh in his heart, so he is, or so is he. Very important, it equates your physical results to your belief system. You know, we talk a lot about mindsets. A mindset is not a belief system different from the one you have. You can have another belief system different from the one you have, but it produces the same result of failure. We're talking of a superior belief system outsourced first from Scripture, from scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation it is important and then to sustain the ability to glean from the mind of extraordinary mentors men and women whose lives through history whose lives through their books have been able to command notable results it is important we must contend for mental transformation very very important listen this is how it is watch this your your I, I, i'm sure that the camera is, is is capturing this your your results listen your results are controlled by your actions your actions are controlled by your decisions your decisions are controlled by the information that has framed your belief system. Your belief system is controlled by the source of the information that has made that belief system. And the source of the information is controlled by the relationships 
and the associations you have kept. Let me repeat myself again. That your result, any result in ministry in life, is controlled by the actions you have taken. And the actions that you take is controlled by your convictions or your belief systems. Your belief systems are controlled by the information, the source of information that has framed that belief system. And then ultimately the relationships, the men and the women you have allowed into your intellectual space, the men and women you have allowed into your mental, your spiritual space. That means if there is a problem with your results, you need to trace it to the actions you are taking. You need to trace it to your belief system. You need to trace it to the source of the information. It matters who mentors you, not just that you are mentored. It matters what books you read, not just that you are a reader. It matters who you listen to, not just that you are a listener. Relationships are important. It's your relationship with God that brought you salvation. It's your relationship with the Holy Spirit that continues to provide spiritual guidance. So I think it is a cause for us to really, we want our results changed, but most times we do not um, check the dynamics properly. We just want to keep focus. People, they focus on action to change the result. So they try something, it doesn't work, they try another action. For as long as action is where you start from, you will live a frustrated life. You must start first from the associations and relationships. Then you now go to the information that comes from those associations. And then the convictions those informations bring. And then the actions that are taken in honor of those convictions. And then inevitably, you will have results that honor those convictions. So this is my third challenge um, to us as a, we must be able to sustain superior beliefs. I continue to challenge myself and I thank God for the privilege and the honor to serve this generation and I thank you for trusting me with your loyalty and your honor. I do not take it lightly and I do not take it for granted. But then I continue to transit myself mentally to rise to the context that is able to bear this global demand and to communicate truth, to communicate righteousness in a way and a manner that can be a blessing to all and sundry, regardless of tribal affiliation, regardless of intellectual stratification, regardless of our political affiliations, regardless of what nation. It is important that we build ourselves intellectually, we build ourselves mentally, so that we can be able to communicate the life of God in a way that becomes attractive, in a way that becomes a blessing. My life has proven it again and again that chasing success is a total waste of time. We must trust God for grace. We must trust God for the ability to be able to um, attract success through the transitions that happen in our minds. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, the next point is that you must be extremely valuable. The key word is extremely. Listen, listen, listen. And I'm speaking to my generation. I know that there are people of all kinds of age ranges, but, but really, if you are from 45 years and under, please listen to me very carefully. This message is most important for you. There is a minimum standard of value that you must bring to the table of greatness for this generation to honor you, for this generation to recognize you, and for this generation to open up their hearts to receive of what you represent. And this is true for believers, sadly speaking and respectfully so. Many, many believers have not contended for the level of value that can make a reward system that is global in context. It is important for us to be extremely valuable. Hear what the Bible says in um, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The Bible says the gift of a man, the gift of a man, my God. You know, as I'm saying this, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed by the truthfulness of this scripture. The gift of a man make it room for him and it brings him the gift is a vehicle 
The man does not go before great men. He does not have what it takes to go. It is the gift that transports him. The value of a man, like a lift, lifting you from one building to the other. You know, when, when you get into an elevator or a lift, it will lift you from ground one to the last floor in a matter of minutes. And the Bible says that your value is akin to that elevator, that it can bring you before great people. We live in a generation that is obsessed about connection. I want to know this. I want to meet this person. I know this person. But the, the surest way to be able to connect to relevant people is to be valuable. The proof that you are valuable is that people pursue you. All men seek for you. I've, I've said it humorously that there are things when you have only the poor will look for you. There are things when you have only the rich will look for you. There are things when you have only children will look for you. There are things when you have only adults will look for you. There are things when you have only sick people will look for you. But there are certain dimensions of value when you have, like it was for Jesus. All men, all men will seek for you. They will veto your background. They will look beyond your weaknesses and limitations. They will, they will cross mountains and walk and pass through waters to meet with you. And this is my challenge to this generation. We must contend to be exceptionally valuable. First Kings 7, 13 and 14. This is a scripture that has blessed me and I, I really would want you to take note of this scripture. First Kings 7 from verse 13 to 14. The Bible talks about a man called Hiram. And the Bible says that King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram. And the Bible says that he was, he was a widow's son. The background of this guy was not something that was desirable. He came from a background that was not, was not worthy of, um, it was not something to be proud of. But he rose to become one who served in the king's palace. He was a craftsman. Very powerful scripture. That means that your background is not the excuse. You can, you can walk your way through being exceptionally valuable to a point where you are blessed. And listen, you will only receive the reward of kings when you can serve kings. If you serve mean men, you cannot receive the reward of kings. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 41, Genesis 41, when you read from verse 14, the Bible says how that the king sent and they brought Joseph from his dungeon. They shaved him and he was ready to go before Pharaoh. And then he interpreted the dreams when you read from verse 33. He now advised the king. He said, um, king, search all over Egypt for a man who is discreet and wise. And he began to suggest an economic blueprint that will save the entire Egypt from financial, um, I mean, lack and want in the days that would come. And then when you read from verse 39, from verse 39 down to 46, the king himself said that there was no man paraphrasing. He had sought for a man and in a moment, ladies and gentlemen, the lifting power of being exceptional. In a moment, within the twinkling of an eye, a man's exceptional value made the king to honor him. When you read from verse 39 to 46, several things happened to him. You know, he had the privilege of marrying um, Potiphera, the daughter of the, you know, the, the priest of On, and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and he, he was lifted because of him. He preserved the nation of, of Israel in Egypt until there arose another Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. So we must be very, very valuable. If you're, if you're writing and you're noting, please take note of this. Every time I teach about value, and I think this is a timely message for this generation, value in my teaching and in my opinion, and this, and this is also consistent with scripture, is divided into two parts. Number one is your virtue. Our generation is, I think we've done fairly well in terms of the intellectual side of value. But the first dimension of value that I'm bringing for you is virtue. Virtue is a, virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. 
it is not only important to be a good IT person, a good engineer, a good doctor, and so on and so forth. Um, we need men and women of solid character. It is true that we are men, but we must continue to contend to rise to a point where we are people of virtue. That when people look at you, you become the clearest expression of the Christ. This is very, very important. The Bible encourages us again and again to be able to build character, to be men and women, to put off the former man, you know, and his deeds, and to put on the new man recreated in Christ. And I appeal to this generation, I beseech you, like the apostle will say, by the mercies of God, that we pay attention to the value and the excellency of character. Character is an, is, a, is an aspect that our generation is losing. There are virtues, virtues of dignity, virtues of respect and honor, virtues of faithfulness, and all of these kinds of things. It is important that we trust God for grace to be able to embrace the kind of character that can make us desirable within the context of our generation. And then, of course, our transactable skill. We must be exceptional. Let me tell you something I wrote here, very important. I said your value decides your relevance. It is true. Now, not your relevance as created by God. Your relevance as demanded by this generation. When nobody is seeking you and placing a demand on what you represent, it is proof. It's a report card to you that you may not be valuable enough. The second thing I want to say about that I wrote here is be competent and excellent. Do not just be valuable. Be competent. Be excellent. These are magnets that will attract people. They will attract opportunities. They will attract resources to you. I tell you this truthfully. Pastors, apostles, prophets, do not, do not embrace a life of laziness and mediocrity just because the grace and the anointing of, of the Spirit of God is upon us. I challenge everyone, career people, uh, school children, um, and, 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 and those who are, are students, those who are workers, be exceptional. Make up your mind that you are going to pay the price and deliver at its peak. Get to the zenith of everything that you are capable of doing. And then you will attract reward systems in a way and a manner that will surprise you. I, I see this every day. I watch with shock and wonder how that people who have not contended for a threshold level of value continue to believe that reward systems will fish themselves into their lives. It's not going to happen. There's no superstition about living a rewarded life. It is a direct measure of your value. And your value must be such that it's needed and useful within the context of a civilization. It's not enough to say, I am valuable. Is your value needed? Is your value useful within the context of a generation, within the context of a civilization? This is very, very important. So don't forget the things we are dealing with. That number one, you must know God, right? Very, very important. And that number two, you must be a person of vision, a clear vision for your life. Number three, you must contend for mental transformation. And then number four, you must be extremely valuable, extremely valuable. Work on your skill, work on your ability. Let, let me challenge you, listen. Run away from premature manifestation. Oh, this is a message to my precious generation. Run away from preachers, listen, apostles, prophets, leaders, business people. Pay the price to work on yourself. This generation is not patient with mediocrity. Once you miss your chance, your first opportunity to make the best impression is going to take you a long time for this generation to listen to you again. Men of God, some of the delay you are experiencing in your ministry may not be demonic. It is God's mercy to preserve you so that when you come out from that cave of Adulam, you can communicate a dimension of spiritual reality that will be a blessing. Run away from premature manifestation. I know we're in a social media world where it's very free to just float an Instagram page, a YouTube page, you know, and we want to sell and market everything. But look, let's get back to the fundamentals of success. The Bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. 
Competence will always pay. Mastery is the way forward in your profession, even spiritually. Praise the name of the Lord. Very quickly, the fifth. I have to rush because I, I'm going to pray for us at the end of this, this uh, broadcast. Number five. I, I'm catching my breath here to, to just let you settle down and listen to what I'm about to teach you as the fifth point. The fifth key that you will need to be able to rise to greatness and then to master um, influence to bless a generation is to understand and master relationships please write that down if you're writing the fifth key you must understand and you must master relationships forget about greatness and forget about influence in today's world when you do not understand the dynamics of relationships amos chapter 3 and verse 3 the bible says can two walk together it didn't say can two people, can two systems, can two companies, can a ministry, people in a ministry, can people in a business, can people in a family. There cannot be progress until there is agreement. Can two work together except they be agreed. The word agreed there means compatibility, similarity of belief systems, similarity of motivations and convictions. Very, very important. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, very powerful scripture. I, I think I should, I should turn there myself. Um, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, very, very powerful scripture. It says, he that walketh with wise men, my version says, shall be wise. Just for walking with wise men, you have gotten rid of foolishness in your life. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. It says, but a companion of fools, it didn't say will be foolish. A companion of fools will not only be foolish, will be destroyed. So destruction has a technology. When you walk with fools, fools here does not mean an insult. It's a description to sustaining a belief system, an ideology that is very inferior and destructive comes from culture, comes from a life of mediocrity, comes from all kinds of motivations that he that works with the wise, that means you want to live a successful life. You have to unashamedly break your pride and look for the company of wise winners and pay the price to be part of that company. It is true. He that works with the wise, the Bible says, will be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Write this down if you're writing, please. Everything advances and multiplies on the basis of relationships. It takes a relationship between a man and his wife to have children. It takes a relationship between a man and the Holy Spirit to produce a supernatural life. It takes a relationship between board members in a company, leaders in a ministry, and, and all kinds of, of, of people. It takes networking to succeed in today's world. It is very important. Everything advances and everything multiplies on the basis of relationship. You move forward when the various organs in your body and systems in your body relate with one another. Your nervous system, your digestive system, your respiratory system, they work in synergy to move this organism forward. Very, very important. Relationships are investments. Please understand this. Relationships are investments by every definition. And so you want to really understand relationships, you must understand investments. When you put some money in a mutual fund or in an investment, you give it time. That means relationship is a product of time. You give it time and you allow your profits to accrue. And then you now begin to reap the benefits. You must be willing to invest in strategic relationships. Invest your resources, invest your honor. Especially when you seek to relate with people who have results. Listen to me. Never try to meet great people at your terms. Never try to relate with great people at your terms. It is pride. 
when you want to relate with a great man, adaptation, a great mentor would say, is proof of honor. You must sustain the adaptability to be able to work with the limitations and the, the whatever it is, the, the, the extra luggages that come with great people. Some of them can be temperous. Some of them can be impatient. Some of them can be insultive. Some of them can be sarcastic. Some of them can be vocally arrogant. You must be able to forbear these things and adapt if you truly seek to receive of the gift, the riches of the greatness that, that is within them. This is very important. Elijah was a very temperous man, for instance, but Elisha followed him carefully until he got a double portion of that grace. It is very important. The disciples walking with Jesus, even though some of them were older than him, he would call them many times little children. Little children, do you have any catch? You can imagine how insulting that would be for people like Peter. But they made up their minds and they embraced him as touching what he represented. It's very, very important. Listen to me. Relationships are very important. The favor systems in our lives are relational in nature. We must sustain the grace and the ability to value relationships. Today, um, many of you, millions of you, truthfully speaking, without exaggeration, all over the internet have celebrated me and continue to celebrate me because of a destiny connection. I may not know some of you, but God sees my heart that I honor you with all my heart and I celebrate you for taking the thoughtfulness. Listen, let me teach you a lesson. If you find people who make you a big deal, if you find people who do not trivialize your relevance, please honor them. Please appreciate them. From the one who sweeps your house, the one who washes your clothes, the one who stands in prayer for you. Master the art of communicating honor to people as a principle of sustaining relationships. Do not trivialize the slightest show of honor. Not everybody in the world thinks Apostle Joshua Selman is a big deal. I'm sure that there are people who can look at me, you know, the internet celebrating this, this man with all due respect and humility. And they may just feel, what is the big deal about him? I have profound respect for them. But when I find a people, and especially a generation, that decides to choose you as the voice of God to that generation and pledge their loyalty and support, it is, it is gross dishonor to take that generation for granted. This is why God sees my heart that I love every one of you and I appreciate and celebrate you. It is not Joshua Selman's birthday. It is the birthday of a generation. It is your birthday. We are celebrating um, the synergy of relationships that is ultimately leading to the revelation of the Christ. More than the exaltation of a man. More than appreciating the impact of a man to a generation. Relationships are important. God has blessed me today with profound relationships. God has honored me with wonderful friends, men and women of God, a company of, of profound people. You cannot imagine uh, during the lockdown, I've, have, I've had a bit of liberty, you know, to ease off the stress from my, my routine. As, as, as you know, I, I live a very busy schedule and I'm honored having that schedule to be able to go, you know, around the world just taking this gospel of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the lockdown has afforded me some opportunity to rest and then to connect with valuable friends. And, 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 and many times I talk with these people and we glean from the wisdom and the grace that God has supplied one for another. And it's amazing how my life has changed. Profound people, profound gifts that God has brought to my life. It is very important. I have been blessed. I consider myself to be one of the most blessed men and women of, uh, I said men and women, men, men of God in, in, um, in, 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 in the world because I have about, honestly speaking, and I say this sincerely from my heart, I have about the, the most loyal workforce that any man can have, sincerely speaking. I have about the most honest, truthful, diligent, committed workforce uh, these people will walk their lives to see to it that, that the glory of God is revealed. 
in and through the ministry and then my life. And even as I'm speaking now, they know that I bless them with all my heart and I'm grateful. Grateful for their love, grateful for their commitment. Um, I, was, I was humorously shown some videos that were made by some of the uh, departments, you know, just celebrated me. And uh, I'm not a very emotional person, but I, I couldn't help, you know, but just, just fight tears coming down from my eyes. I was really, really touched. Relationships, do they mean anything to you? Or do you trivialize people? Are, are your relationships parasitic or mutually beneficial? This is very important. There are many people who come into the lives of people and just pray, pray on their gifts, pray on their influence, pray on their achievements, pray on everything just for self-aggrandizement. And that is terrible. Relationships are very, very important. I bless God for granting me grace to relate with you. I bless God for granting me the honor to be able to relate with a generation. It's very important. It's an act of his mercy to me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Mm. No wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. That's my testimony. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Mm. There's no lie you won't kick down, wall you won't tear down, coming after me. God has blessed me with great relationships. And I truly, truly want to use this opportunity to celebrate and appreciate everybody who has contributed to making my life what it is today. I am a product of many graces. I am a product of the endorsement of several people. I'm a product of the participation of many people. Let's go very quickly. Number six. The sixth point that I'll be sharing very quickly is that you must seek genuine spiritual empowerment. Let's hurry up. Genuine spiritual empowerment. I believe in impartation. Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 to 20. I'll just give you the references. I may not um, quote them and may, I may not read them because of time. Numbers chapter 27, please. 18 to 20. And then Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. It says that you should anoint Joshua. Find Joshua and, and, you know, and Aaron and all of that and anoint them. Joshua was anointed, he had the spirit of God, but he was anointed. And that he told Moses to take some of his honor and give Joshua. Honor is a grace, it can be transferred. Very, very powerful. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24. Psalm 89, maybe I should turn uh, there just, just for emphasis. Psalm 89, I'll read it very, very quickly. Psalm 89 from verse... 20, 89 from verse 20. Let me open my Bible here. From verse 20, it says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. It says, with whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy, because of the anointing now, the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. 24, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. There is immunity that comes when you are empowered. There is grace that comes when you are empowered. You must seek genuine spiritual empowerment. Now, there are people who just stop in the realm of intellect, in the realm of the flesh, and downplay the place of spiritual empowerment. It is risky and it is costly. Life is spiritual. Life is intellectual. I agree. I spoke about value earlier on, but life is very spiritual. And as the days progress, especially in this day and age, there is a need for divine assistance, divine empowerment. You need impartation and you need the place of the prophetic. Let me say this very emphatically. Now, I know respectfully speaking, 
and I hope I don't get into trouble saying this, but I know that there's been a lot of abuses and imbalances in the prophetic and apostolic ministry, especially across Africa. It's a sad reality that we may have to admit that there's been a lot of, um, there is a mix of all kinds of things. I agree, and I know God is helping us. However, please do not make the mistake of ignoring the place of the prophetic in actualizing the destiny of a man and in rising to a point where you are at the zenith of your kingdom relevance. The prophetic has always in scripture and will always play a very vital role. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved. It's very, very important. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. At the end of this broadcast, I'll be making reference to this scripture as I pray for us. It's a scripture that has blessed me for many years. Ezra 6 and verse 14. It says, uh, and the elders of, of the land builded and they prospered through the prophesying, you know, of, of, of um, Haggai the prophet, Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built and you know and they and they accomplished they they finished it i think that, that that's the rendition it is important there is the place of the prophetic very important there is the place of the prophetic where words are spoken over your life i'm a product of many anointings words have been spoken over my life and and it's amazing how these words have changed me completely I have had the privilege of men and women speaking over my life and, and my life has been transformed sometimes overnight by the power of the prophetic. Number seven. The seventh point that I'm going to give us on this, this privileged day of my birthday as a key to rising to a point of transgenerational relevance. The seventh point and very important is live a life of joy and gratitude. You want to influence a generation, you must live a life of joy and gratitude. A few scriptures, please. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 to 18. Habakkuk 3 and verse 17 to 18. It talks about the fig tree not blossoming, that even though there's no olive on the vine, and so on and so forth, they say, yet I will rejoice, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. We live in a generation that, you know, seems to endure sadness and gloominess. We have all kinds of emotional justifications. And please, please don't, don't misunderstand me. I know that people are going through several things. People have lost their loved ones through the pandemic, you know, People have lost money, people have lost opportunities, people have lost time, you know, and, and several things. But, but I want to encourage you, it's important for you to know that joy is very important in a believer's life. Very, very important. And gratitude. I have, I have, I have said it again and again that ingratitude is one of the greatest causes of delay. I think even more than demonic oppression. A life that is not apt to notice the, the slightest show of grace and kindness from God. It is very important. I live a life of gratitude. This morning, uh, I was just blessing the Lord for my life and I lay flat on the, on the, on the floor and I, I was just rolling before him and I was just saying, Majesty, thank you. Look what you've made out of my life. It's very important. There are many of you today, the doors of favor have closed over your life because you are not careful to be grateful. You are not careful to be grateful. Remember what God has done in your life. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, forget not his benefits. Never forget where God has taken you from. Never forget, don't allow the joy of the palace make you forget that once upon a time I didn't have food to eat. Once upon a time nobody would have placed a demand upon the grace of God on my life, you would say. Once upon a time I would be looking for 100 naira or 100 dollars or whatever currency it is in your region. Now look what God has made and done with my life. Right there where you are at home or wherever you're, you're watching from, can you just take a minute to say, Lord, thank you. 
can you just take a minute to express your thanksgiving? When you are thoughtful, you will be grateful. Many people are not grateful because they don't think. They don't think. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Joshua Selman's life. I am honored for what you have made out of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your favor. You have not allowed the desires of our enemies to come upon us. You have shown us great mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Keep telling him thank you. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Mention everything he has done. Thank you for life. Thank you, O oh God. I may not have a job, but I have life. Thank you for the gift of good people. Thank you for well-behaved children. Thank you for a good wife. Thank you for a good husband. Thank you for granting me the anointing. Thank God for your membership. I know you are trusting God for greater membership, but thank God. Thank God for salvation. It is very, very important. Very important. Go ahead. Just one minute. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We are not careful. We are lavish, lavish, lavish. For the things that you have done, for the battles that you have won, we say thank you. To you be all the glory for a life that you have so blessed. You have invested your jealousy upon my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I live a life of joy and I live a life of gladness. Believe me, I can tell you this. You will never find me putting my hand on my chin wondering what's my life going to become. No, no, no. I live a very joyful life. I live a very grateful life. There are many things I'm trusting God to do in the ministry, to do in my life, and I thank God for the things he's doing. But I'm very careful to say thank you. I'm not ashamed or afraid to go on my knees. And listen, it is not only God you should thank. You must thank men. If you thank God alone, you are a hypocrite because God uses men to bless you. Daddy, thank you for what you have done in my life. Mommy, thank you. I have gotten, I think, sincerely without exaggeration, from night until this broadcast started, I think there's been at least maybe five or 6,000 text messages. I, I just had to plug my phone and just leave it charging and go to bed and then... I keep, you know, just, I've not even read more than 98% of the text messages. When I'm done and everything is settled, I may not be able to respond to everybody, but you can imagine. To have over 6,000 people, I don't know how many may be sending now all over the world. Millions of people saying thank you. Thanksgiving is powerful. It is the seed for more. When you stand before a door that refuses to open, it's not just to bind and cast. Thank God that he even brought you close to that door. I live a very grateful and a joyful life. When you live a grateful life and you live a joyful life, you will see dimensions of God's grace. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In all your ways. In all your ways. Use today to thank God, not just for Joshua Selman, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for what he has made out of our lives. As frail as we are, as limited as we are, as imperfect as we are, look what he's brought out of our lives. Beauty and glory. Very, very important. Let me give us the last point. Number eight. The last key to influencing a generation is practice genuine love. Mm. Practice genuine love. I've done a teaching, What is Love? You may want to listen to it. It's a two-part series, very powerful. Please get it online and listen to it. There are four dimensions of love that I teach. That love, the Bible talks about the length, the breadth, the height of the love of God. That true, genuine love has passion attached to it. 
There cannot be genuine love when there is no passion. Number two, genuine love requires commitment. There is a commitment dimension to it. Number three, genuine love has pleasure to it. Love cannot just be an episode of pain. There is a pleasure dimension to love. And then finally, sacrifice. These are the four dimensions of love. Passion, commitment, pleasure, sacrifice. One more time. Passion, commitment, pleasure, sacrifice. But I submit to you that the highest and the noblest expression of love is not passion. It's not commitment. It's not even pleasure. Is sacrifice. We live in a generation, respectfully speaking, that is very obsessed about pleasure. And every time we cannot derive pleasure from a thing or a relationship, we usually just assume that there is no love there. But the highest and the noblest expression of love is sacrifice. John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world he didn't just prove it by laughing around. He didn't just prove it by multiplying bread that he gave his one and only begotten son. Of course, now the first begotten of we the brethren, but at that time, the only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, the Bible says, should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 15, when you read John 15 from verse 12 to 13, John 15. Let, let me read it for us very quickly. John 15 from verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, Jesus is speaking, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life. That means as far as the earth realm is concerned, there is no manifestation of love that is higher than this than a man laid down his life. Hear me, my precious generation. Hear me, dear people of God. Love is not just about what you get. Love many times may require you laying down your life. And I've pledged myself and my life to serve my generation in life and in death as God grants grace, that I will serve the purposes of the kingdom in this generation. And if it will cost me my life, like Paul, let it be for me that to live is Christ. And if I die serving his purposes, it will be with a smile and honor that it, it would be that I serve my generation and I serve the purposes of God. Your life must be poured out as a sacrifice. Enough of receiving from people. Make up your mind that others is now time for people to receive from you. To receive of your gift, to receive of your grace, your benevolence. Very, very important. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 3. As we prepare to pray. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 3. It says, Now there abided these three. Faith that moves mountains. Hope that maketh not ashamed. And love. The Bible talks about these tripartite forces. Faith. You don't have faith. There's so much you cannot do. Faith. The token of victory. Hope. That makes not a shame. And love. But it says the greatest. Please hear me. The greatest. is not miracles. Thank God for the grace of God upon my life. In the working of miracles and signs and wonders. And I know that so many of you have been blessed on that wise. I have been humbled by the profound miracles that God continues to do in and through these hands and in and through this life. I thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom as committed to me by his majesty. But I submit to you that the greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman was a miracle worker. The greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman raised the dead and, and brought miracles to homes, as important as that is. The greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman is a man of depth and revelation. 
No, it's not that Joshua Selman is a man of excellence and so on and so forth. The greatest testimony I desire is that Joshua Selman walked with God as a passionate lover of God and a passionate lover of men. I don't use men. I love men. I love men. I don't just love God alone. Jesus Christ, he knows I love him with all my heart. But I'm telling you, I love men. I love every one of you following, listening, connecting with our various platforms. I love you with all my heart. I love you. I'm not only trying to use you to build a career called ministry. No. Love is palpable. In fact, did you know, I'm, I'm sure that my, my blessed parents are watching from Joss and, and my family members. I love you so much. I, I thank my mom and dad. I believe that they are watching and following and all my siblings, precious gifts that God has given me. Uh, please allow my bias. Let me just take a moment to bless this precious gift that God has given me in my life. Um, um, they, they are a big deal. They have loved me and believed in me. And I truly love and honor you with all my heart. I appreciate you. I, I bless God for my parents for being discerning enough to give me the name. Did you know that Selman means the way to love? What a name. What a precious prophecy. And it is my desire that I continue to live out that name. To love people genuinely. Listen. Let the era of selfishness, let the era of self-centeredness, whether it is from men of God, we men of God, or from business people, or in relationships, use this opportunity of this birthday to kill it completely. Nobody will applaud you for being a pest and, and taking from people. You must make up your mind that I'm going to be a lover of God and I'll be a lover of men and start Please start from your neighborhood. You really want to celebrate Joshua Selman? You send me financial blessings. I am grateful, but it, it, it may not be satisfying to me. You send me material gifts. I am grateful, but it may not be satisfying to me. The greatest satisfaction is to bless the Lord for me and then to be able to extend my ideologies and convictions by granting people access to these teachings and then to be able to share the love of Jesus to those around you. If you buy a bag of rice and share it for the people in your community and say this is to honor Joshua Selman's birthday, I love you and I bless God for you, I would have derived the greatest satisfaction from my relationship. It, there is only so much food I can eat. There is only so much money I can use. There is only so much I can do with influence and the accolades of men. But what if you do it to someone in the name of the Lord? This is my desire. Sacrifice. Live a life of sacrifice and do not be embarrassed about it. Precious generation, hear me. Do something for people that will make them remember you. At the end of this life, as I wrap up, it is not our sermons that will be remembered. It is not our intellectual prowess that will be remembered. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. I live ever conscious of the gift of life that God has given me. And as I sat back this morning reflecting on my own life, thanking him for what he has done in my life, and the privilege is granting me to go to the nations of the world. You know, my heart bled so much uh, when the lockdown came because of several meetings uh, that, that, that I was already scheduled to have and several people who had anticipated my coming. And let me use this opportunity to assure you those from all of those regions. I, I was to be in the UK again, South Africa again, the United States again, Canada Again, Dubai and um, 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 Israel. Israel was already um, uh, uh, cooking up. And, and then um, a number of African nations, Kenya, um, Zambia, Ghana. And some of them, probably if the lockdown is lifted, I may still be able to honor them. But for many, I'm sure it may not be possible again. And then, of course, many meetings within the nation. I want you to know that by the grace of God, is a debt I owe you. And God will grant grace it will be an honor to bring a divine visitation to those regions. And as soon as all this is done by the grace of God, 
and, and uh, life's uh, normalcy returns as, as we anticipate. Um, it would be an honor to visit these nations again and again and to bring this dimension of the kingdom, the power and the glory of God. Thank you. I love people and I pray that God will give us the heart of sacrifice. The heart to be able to lay down our lives for others. So that when all is said and done, it will not be that he was a millionaire or billionaire. It will not just be that he was an, uh, an amazing preacher with intellectual prowess. It will not just be that he built a ministry that was global. That at the end of our lives, like Don Moen will always say, that there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life for truth? Like Don Moen will say, that all my treasures will mean nothing. It is only what I've done for love's reward that will stand the test of time. I want to pray for you. This would be my birthday gift. The word that I've brought and the prophetic decree that will come upon you. Psalm 71 verse 21. This is the word that the Lord gave me for my own birthday. Every time I celebrate my birthday, the Lord gives me a word that becomes a compass for the next level of my life. And this was the word he gave me. And I'm sharing it with you, Psalm 71 and verse 21. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Some versions say roundabout. Thou shall increase my greatness. A man's greatness can increase. A man's influence can increase. Thou shall increase my greatness. I want to pray for you now. Please, wherever you are in one minute, I'd like you to begin to pray and say, Lord, as your servant is about to make decrees over my life, I open up my spirit. Now is the time to pray all over the world, all over. I sing praises to your name. Go ahead and pray. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises. Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Keep praying one more time. I'm about to speak over your life. I sing praises to your name, oh God, praises to your name, oh God, for your name is great, it's greatly to be praised. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I love you, Lord, and I lift my hands to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what? you hear and let it be a sweet sweet 
sound in your ears. Are you praying? I'd like you to open up your heart. What do you want God to do in your life? For some of you, you are trusting God for a miracle. For some of you, you are trusting God for a breakthrough. Go ahead. I'm already in tears here just worshiping the Lord for what he's doing. Go ahead. Celebrate his majesty. Place a demand. Father, I open up my heart. Let this prophecy bring healing. Let this prophecy bring restoration. You have a sick person. Bring them before your screen. Take joy, my King. In what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. Lord, when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorify. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorify. Hey, I'm satisfied. To see you glorify. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place the anointing of the holy ghost is strong in this place strong in your homes your offices strong in this place to change your life to turn your life around carlos cabarando selicapaya that anointing is coming to your home coming to your body coming to your spiritual life just breathe your name upon me breathe just breathe your name upon me breathe ah. your is your name breathe lord just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Ah. Breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair, what hair is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yes, Lord. Pray, don't be distracted. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. It's more than a broadcast. It's, it's an initiation into a life of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Majesty, we're praying. Majesty, your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hands. Hey. Majesty, your majesty, forever I am changed by your love, 
in the presence of your majesty yeah. forever I am changed by your love thank you Jesus thank you Jesus this is what it's all about. More than Joshua Selman, a revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same. I'm about to pray for you shortly. I'd like you to ask anything you are trusting God for. Go ahead. Following us on Instagram and, and Twitter and the YouTube page, Facebook, go ahead. Let the Lord know what you trust from Him. I'm about to release that grace all over the nations. For some of you, it's a new level in ministry. For some of you, it's a new level in family. Some of you, it's an age-long captivity to be broken. For some of you, it's a new dimension in the anointing. For some of you, it's access to revelation and insight. Go ahead, pray. One more minute and I'm praying for you. Kobaratushia. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Your life is about to change. Ela basu brande gebalatus et heliza siada brandi gebaladaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. I don't mean to be proud, and forgive me if I sound proud. But the Lord has put a mysterious anointing upon the life of this man you are watching. The anointing of the Spirit upon my life is not for a ministry, it's not for a nation, it's for a generation. And the Lord has honored his word upon my life. I have a covenant with God that releases possibilities to the lives of people. And he has not failed. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe God for strange manifestations in your life. Now everywhere in your home, your office, I'd like you to stretch your hands towards your screen. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to pray now. I want to pray now. These are not the hands of a man. These are the hands of Jesus stretched through a man. I'd like you to stretch your hands right now. Following on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and whatever platform you're going to be watching this from. Stretch your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my precious global family. I pray for all who are following right now, connecting. Some are in tears. Some are having their hearts open towards you, trusting to receive. You have granted me the privilege of life on this day. And an opportunity to share that life with millions of people all over the world. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of the Spirit move from my hands to every home, to every office, to every situation. In the name of Jesus, 
Let there be a birthing of new, fresh hunger for spiritual things, a desire and a passion for the things of the Spirit, for those whose prayer life has gone down, for those whose worship life has gone down. I pray in the name of Jesus, let there be a fresh visitation from God, a fresh visitation. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, a fresh visitation by the power of the Holy Ghost, a fresh visitation. I pray for many who are carrying burdens, burdens that no one may know from America to the United Kingdom to Canada, Germany, Africa, Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. I rebuke infirmity. Everyone trusting God for a miracle. I stretch my hands. You're on the wheelchair. In the name of Jesus, every kind of infirmity, I cause that devil. Be free right now. Be perfected. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are trusting for an anointing for the next level of life in ministry. For the next level of life in business for the next level of life in family i stretch my hands receive that grace may that grace come upon you right now i place an anointing upon you that distinguishes you i declare that you are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden in the name of jesus i rebuke delay from your life in the name of jesus i rebuke delay from your life by the supernatural power of the holy spirit i pray favor favor upon your life upon your ministry i pray for every son and every daughter in the faith and and in the gospel may you carry this same fire reproduce it in the name of jesus i bless you i decree and declare that it is well with you the hand of god is strong upon your life in the name of jesus you will find purpose you will find your place in life Gener your generation will celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. And for all those who are in the studio here, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you for your labor of love and I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will experience the grace of God. Move from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now please listen just a few um, announcements bear with me I, I get teary sometimes when I'm in his presence so I just have to clean myself up but just two important announcements please listen number one I want to encourage everyone everyone who um, has followed and is following please I want you to share this video let it go around the world and bless somebody make sure that it you have a, a, a blog page, your, your, your personal page, tag it, share it all around the world and let millions be blessed. It is not to exalt a man and tell them this is, this is Apostle Joshua Selman's gift to you, a message that could bless and transform you. You could be saving a life, you could be saving someone. And I want you to connect with us on all our social media platforms. It will be projected right now, um, the Facebook page, the YouTube, uh, Twitter, and, and, and Instagram, and, and every other platform that we have. Please do well. Um, connect with us. Koinonia Global is the YouTube page. For many of you who are following our YouTube channel, you can like, you can share, and um, by God's grace, would continue to make it active with content that would, that would bless you. And um, subscribe to our, our, our YouTube channel. And you can like and share all our other pages, our platforms. And the Lord himself will truly bless you, bless you sincerely. And let me just, sadly, I, 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 I didn't think I would do this, uh, but I have to do it. I, I know that you love me all over the world and I'm grateful for your love. I'm indebted to you. But it's unfortunate that there are a group of people, it has gotten to my table time and again that there have been several people parading all over the internet 
as Joshua Selman and coming up with all kinds of charitable projects, taking advantage of the love, the support and the loyalty that people have for me and extracting money from people and it's, it's terrible it's, uh, to know that people can, can do these kinds of things. And I'm saying it especially to our international community. There are a number of sites, I don't know if the media would project them, but that is not me. Personally, I'm not on social media. You find any Apostle Joshua Selman or anything that looks like me on social media, it is not me. Uh, these are scammers. They may project my message. They may do a lot of things. But anybody, let me say this. Um, you are always free to share my content. It's, it's been my joy. And, and there, are, there are several platforms on YouTube, Instagram, and all over that just, I know that there are different fan pages on, on social media that just celebrate what God is doing in my life and become support systems for us to take this message. I love you, those people. You have my endorsement and my blessings. But anybody, please listen, let this be a disclaimer. Anyone who would ask you to send money, to give them money for any charitable project, um, um, please know that you are dealing with a fraudster. You can feel free to report them um, to the, the various um, uh, uh, authorities that govern the social media platforms, and you can also do well to communicate our protocol department, our media department, our public relations department. The lines will also be on the screen uh, for you to see. Please make sure you have these details. Have our protocol lines, our public relations lines. They, they respond to everything that has to do with correspondences, the media for all your media concerns. Um, this is so that you can have uh, the, the, the authorized channels. We make ourselves as accessible as possible. For everything that has to do with the ministry, we have able-bodied, trained people who love you passionately, who will be able to communicate. And for all your givings, you can also contact our finance department. Absolutely lovely people. Please listen, because I know that many of you um, desire to probably sow into my life, sow into the ministry. There are, there are designated details that the finance department can give to you. Please Anyone parading, I would repeat again, as Joshua Selman. I do not have any charity project. I'm a philanthropist. You know that I give with all my heart. But I do not have any orphanage home that I... Uh, and then I will not... I'm not even on social media. And I think it's, it's insulting to you. I honor you too much to go on social media and ask you for money for prayer. Please, listen, I, I want to say this. You know that I'm a man of integrity and this also, let me use the opportunity to say it on behalf of any uh, man and woman of God that is a person of integrity. When you listen to a man's message, it gives you an idea of their convictions, what they can do and what they cannot do. I, 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 I will never, never go by God's grace. God has blessed me with several people who continue to bless and support what we represent all over the world, and I am profoundly grateful for their partnership. Please and please, if you want to partner with the ministry, you want to bless me, there are designated channels. I am grateful, uh, but so that your seeds don't enter um, wrong hands and have people take advantage of you. Millions of naira, thousands of dollars have been uh, extracted by several people in the name of, uh, you know, all kinds of things. There are even people who have supposedly written publications uh, as Joshua Selman. It's unfortunate, uh, you know. It's come to my notice also that people have written books purporting to be Joshua Selman. When a book is out, we have that influence and we'll let people know. By God's grace, we have lots of things out. I know that God has granted me a measure of influence and I'm grateful for it. And many people uh, can leverage on it for their own advantage, provided you do not hurt people, provided you do not scam people. It's a terrible thing. And I will assure you that we will continue to look out for these people and make sure that the social media, as far as this ministry is concerned, is safe for your participation. So please do well. Connect with us on, on our, all our platforms for updates. And then um, do well to spread the teachings. The teachings are free. Let them go all over the world. 
and then um, just let everybody know that I am grateful. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for everything. Um, I'm a very shy person, humorously speaking. I have the grace and the boldness only when I'm on stage. So I'm not a spotlight person at all. It's taken me a lot of courage to just come and bless um, the people of God. And I'm happy that I did. But then I just want to encourage you to keep loving Jesus, keep pressing towards the things of God. My family in Zaria, thank you. I love you, my precious people. I love you with all my heart. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you, the workers, my precious leaders, and all who name the name of Christ in this nation and around the world. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.